Welcome back to TFT Central. Today we're going to be taking you through the best settings for the LG 32GS95UE, the 32 inch 480Hz dual mode monitor. So we'll set the screen up in both SDR and HDR modes and we'll take you through the other settings like the OLED care features as well. So we'll come into the main menu and we'll start in the general section just to check the OLED care features. So you'll see that the screen move setting is turned off by default. You can enable that here if you want. That will help with image retention mitigation a little bit. It will move the screen periodically a few pixels at a time. We find that a bit distracting in Windows desktop personally, but you can enable that here. We'd recommend experimenting with one of the other modes potentially. Leave the OLED screensaver turned on if you can. That will help dim the screen if it detects static content. That's useful to have enabled. There's nothing else really to enable in the OLED care menu here. So the main section that we're going to want to change will be in the game adjust and the picture adjust settings. So for SDR, we're going to set the screen in the game mode gamer one by default. That is actually the default anyway. You can enable or disable adaptive sync here, depending on your preference. We're going to come back into the picture adjust menu and we're going to first of all check that the peak brightness setting is turned off. That will ensure that in SDR you get a uniform brightness behavior. You get a nice consistent brightness. It doesn't change as you move windows around or change the content that you're viewing. That's preferable for desktop applications, certainly. So leave that peak brightness set to off. And we're going to change the brightness slider here. We're going to move it down to a setting of 64. That should return you a luminance around 120 nits. Or you can set it at 71 for 150 nits or 84 for 200 nits. We're gonna set that down at 64, which is our usual 120 nits. Contrast, you can leave at its default 70 setting. Sharpness, you can leave at 50. Gamma, you can leave on mode two. That's the closest to a 2.2 gamma. And color temp, you can leave on custom as well. And RGB on 50, 50, 50. Actually, that's a really good balance for white point we found very close to 6,500 Kelvin. So there's no real reason to change any of those other settings there other than the brightness. If you come back out of that menu and into game adjust again, you may want to change the black stabilizer up a couple of notches from its default 50. You could move up to 55 or maybe 60. Have a look at some black test patterns to see. This will vary from unit to unit, but we found on our sample the near black shadow detail was crushed a little bit by default and moving this up a couple of notches really helped there. So experiment with that. It will vary depending on your unit and your system. So just check that out and see what's best for your usage. So with the screen running in the Gamer 1 preset mode, the screen will operate in its full native wide gamut. Now that will be more saturated and more colorful than the sRGB reference space. We expect most people to find that perfectly fine for gaming and multimedia and probably just general usage as well. You may also want to check out our calibrated ICC profile linked below. That is designed to be run in this wide gamut mode, but will clamp the color space back to sRGB in color aware applications. If you specifically want to work with the sRGB color space and emulate that, you need to come into the game mode section and change to the sRGB mode here. So that will clamp the color gamut for you, but you'll see that a lot of the other settings are now unavailable apart from brightness and contrast. You can use the same brightness settings that we recommended before. So you could move that down to around 64 for 120 nits, 71 for 150 nits, or 84 for 200 nits. That would be the best way to run in sRGB color gamma if you want to specifically work with that color space. But we think most people will be better off just sticking with the Gamer 1 mode and the wide gamma operation. We've enabled HDR from Windows now, and you can see that this is reflected in the on-screen menu as well. We would recommend only enabling HDR in Windows when you're actually going to view HDR content, whether that's a game or a movie or something else. Don't leave it running all the time. Just stick to SDR mode if you're going to be using the screen outside of HDR content. In HDR mode, you'll see that there's a series of game modes available here. Gamer 1, 2, FPS, RTS and Vivid. We like to stick to the Gamer 1 mode. We found that the most accurate in our testing but you might want to consider adjusting the peak brightness setting up to high. That will give you a much brighter HDR experience and that will be more impactful and give you brighter highlights than the low mode. And we think most people will find that better. 
It isn't quite as accurate in terms of EOTF tracking as the low mode, but we think again that most people will prefer that setup. So move that up to high there. The brightness should also be on its maximum 100 there as well. There's no need really to change the color temperature away from the warm setting. We found that very close to 6,500 Kelvin anyway. So that's the screen setup for both SDR and HDR usage. If you found this video helpful, please give us a quick like below. That would be really helpful. If you've got any questions, let us know in the comments as well. And don't forget to hit subscribe to stay up to date on future monitor reviews and other content. Thank you for watching. We'll catch you next time.